My name is Roshni, I'm a life coach, and this channel is called Bitchy Grow Up. It's dedicated to taking control of your mental health. So today I actually wanted to share some of the things that helped me get out of my recent depression and kind of the funk that I was in. I, I honestly feel way, way better than I did um, just a few months ago, and you can definitely go back and watch some of my videos through that journey. Um, but otherwise, I wanted to share a few things that I've done that really helped me um, get out of my depression. And the first one is actually changing around my self-care routine. So I actually filmed what that looks like for you yesterday morning and I'm gonna play that now hey you guys I'm super tired I just wanted to talk a little bit about how my self-care routine has like completely changed basically and how um, it's honestly just given me such a big refresher to like actually do something different in the morning and especially when it comes to like getting ready for my day but it's more like the idea that I found joy in something that I wasn't previously finding joy in. The reason that I wanted to talk about this too is just to encourage you to like completely change up your self-care routine like and obviously if something's working for you and it's something that you just do every now and then like take a bath or something like you obviously so you don't have to change that if you're still loving it and if it's still giving you like every benefit that you're looking for but if it comes down to like you doing like reading every single morning before you go to work or something that you've been doing every day that you love but it just feels stale like it doesn't mean that you're going to stop doing that activity but it's just a way of like changing how you communicate with yourself before i i wasn't doing this at all like this wasn't a part of my really everyday morning routine for the last um year at least and just like finding a little level of that and being able to do something new kind of challenges me and it helps me get out of my rut and it gives me something new to think about and i just think you know think about how easy easily like your body gets used to things like whether it's you know using the same shampoo or it's you know living in the cold or warm climate that you've lived in for so long and now like living anywhere else just seems like wild for your body you know like we get used to things so easily and if it's the exact same way with self-care like sometimes i know that emotions are building up and that i haven't addressed them and that's when i'll sit down and journal but if you're obsessing about your emotions 24 7 then that's what you need some self-care from it's about letting yourself feel that no matter how chaotic and what your problems are in life you still deserve a little self-care and when you actually let yourself mentally like realize that and and live that then it kind of changes everything to just allow yourself to not think about it and to be okay and to celebrate who you are regardless of what your external circumstances might be telling you it's just important to not stay attached to the results whether that's you know how you look every day or whether it's how you're doing at work like you could have a really bad year but you could keep taking what happened to that one year and just not letting yourself live it down building it up in your head building your story in your head that that's who you are like if there was a tragedy in your family like not letting it go and i know that that's hard especially when it comes to like grieving or something so maybe that's not the best example but you know maybe you lost your job you no know, like you could give up and just say that my story is that i'm now the unemployed person it's always something that can be changed and it's always something that can be moved past no matter what it is like humans have moved past the worst violence the worst tragedies in their lives and that doesn't make it okay and that doesn't make it right but i'm just saying like it really is your choice whether you let the stories that you've been telling yourself rule your life or whether you're willing to let go and change that story when you find yourself you know committing to a self-care practice every single day what you'll also find is that you're saying that i'm still a person no matter what's going on in or outside of my life and we need that reminder because we get so so down on ourselves and we get so angry at ourselves for not performing at 110 percent or for not being perfect or for not looking flawless while we're doing it but yeah i think like you know you can't be so focused on like other people's beauty standards and things like that and that's when it makes makeup not feel fun anymore because you feel like you just have to you have all this pressure to just look a certain way and to, to be a certain way for other people and that is another example of like being attached to these external things. It's not about you anymore and it's not about how you care for yourself. It's about 
what other people are going to think of you and all these negative things that start building up and making everything feel like it's so much pressure and then feeling like you have to be perfect or you're not good enough and when you build up who you want to be to be this perfect person in your mind that's and it makes sense to, you know, want your best self to be put together and to be successful and, and that's not wrong. But when you build yourself up on such a pedestal and say, you know what, I looked great today and I felt put together, but I forgot, you know, this one thing or I was late to this one thing that I had to go to. So therefore, like, I'm still not there yet. I'm still not right yet. You're going to end up losing years of your life because you're constantly feeding that idea that you're not good enough and the ironic idea is the only thing that you're comparing yourself to is an idea of your future self in your mind like you're literally using your imagination to trick yourself into saying that you're not good enough regardless of what's going on around you you need to just focus on the belief that you are worthy and above anything else even if your situation does suck say yeah this situation sucks i'm here i accept that this is my situation but i know that i can do so much more than this i know that this situation isn't me and i'm gonna treat myself like i know what my situation should be like what i want it to be and those little tactics um are just absolutely massive in getting to the core of first of all what your worthiness issues are and second of all it'll help you get out of the circumstances that you don't want to be in if you feel like you're absolute trash then you're going to feel like you're going to deserve the trash circumstances that you have and until you change one of those beliefs around you know to say that you don't deserve that circumstance you're going to find different ways to either get yourself back there or find similar situations that are just as detrimental um so it really comes with the core of your beliefs and that's why i think that you know changing up your self-care routine is such a big part of that um it keeps things fresh it keeps you thinking it keeps you creative and we all know how good creativity is um if you haven't watched my everyday artist video it's it's just a time to show up and a time to check in with yourself and even if it's a time to tune out and to just watch Netflix because you have so much else going on in your life, you're still saying that, you're still teaching yourself that regardless of how crazy things get, if you feel like you're doing what you can to help yourself out of the situation and you're not like skirting all your responsibilities, then literally what is wrong with just giving yourself that time to just relax and to just not think about your problems because no matter how much you think about them and worry about them if nothing none of that is going to actually change it until you take action so if you're not in the actual moment of taking action or in the planning moment of how you're going to take action then there's nothing productive that you're doing except for just worrying and freaking yourself out instead take that exact same energy and that exact same brain power and focus it on believing that you are worthy and that you you know, deserve something that's much better. Spend that time manifesting what you actually want. Get specific with the universe on, you know, what you want the universe to bring you. If you are constantly saying that, you know, this situation sucks, but I also suck and I deserve it, and that's why I'm in this situation in the first place, like, that's not gonna do you any good. And you're just hurting yourself and you're elongating that timeline of how long comes down to worthiness, it all comes down to your limiting beliefs, which is why I talk about them so much on this channel, and it also all comes down to your affirmations, your limiting yourself, um, think about yourself, you know this is a little bit like that, a little bit different, and enjoy this, um, if you actually Like a, you know, 
looks extra weird but I'm gonna change and get ready so the next thing that I actually wanted to talk about is decluttering now I know decluttering has been talked about a lot the whole minimal minimalism thing is still a decently big trend but everyone's kind of heard um, something or the other about minimalism or about decluttering and that's not exactly what I wanted to talk to you about um, I wanted to talk about more like emotional decluttering in a way. So I am talking about getting rid of some physical items, but I'm also talking about shedding the beliefs that go along with these items. So I think that it's really, really important to understand that a big part of our personal growth journey and a big part of, you know, being a better person and changing your habits around is not only learning a lot of new things and changing your habits and taking all this action, but a lot of it is actually unlearning a lot of the things that we've been taught to you know, think of as true or that we've been taught through our, our childhoods and so much of what we saw around us, it, whether it was intentional or not, shapes how we see the world. So if you don't let go of those beliefs, there'll still be a part of you that no matter how much you want to change or no matter how much you want to think of the world as a different place, you're still going to have those foundational fundamental beliefs about, you know, money or about how people treat each other or about happiness or about what you deserve. And I think that stuff is a big part of that. And so that's something that I recently did as well. I moved and I did a massive decluttering process, but then I also really looked at some things and kind of asked myself what that item really meant to me. And I don't think you really have to sit there with every single one of your items and say, you know, how do I feel about this? But, you know, just keep it in the back of your mind as you're going through, or if you you can even think of a few things that you might have around your house now that you know maybe were left from a friend or maybe are were items from like an ex that you had or maybe they you know were like reminders of an old job that you have that you don't work at anymore. Um, it could be really anything, any old part of you, and it doesn't even mean that that whole time in your life was bad or that you hate the person who that whose item it was or anything like that. All it means is that, you know, every time you see that item, what is your initial reaction? Do you kind of feel iffy about it or does it kind of take you to a place where you're like, eh, that wasn't really the best or I don't know, even um, some of the things that I got rid of were objects that were from other friends that they'd given me and they're people that I'm not friends with any longer. So obviously, you know, I um, do clothing swaps and things like that with my friends and obviously if we're still friends or if the item is still something that I, I appreciate, I'll definitely keep it. But I had a few um, jackets and a couple of things from people that I'm not really friends with anymore and I don't really have like the best relationship with them or just no relationship at all really and so unlearning and letting go of my trust issues and you know the belief that no one you would really stay friends with me or that people were going to betray me and it was 
helpful in making me step out of that feeling and transitioning into being like, okay, I'm the kind of person that believes that, you know, friendships last a really long time. And I'm the kind of person who's only friends with really trustworthy people and people see me as trustworthy. And, you know, it kind of helps me look around my home or, you know, get the feeling that that is who I am. Because if you are sitting there and you're creating affirmations for yourself or you're, you know, visualizing yourself, having all these friends and having all these great things around you, around your house, you actually have these items of, you know, broken friendships of or of irreparable relationships. Those are still reminders that are kind of detracting from your overall goal of being this trustworthy person who's also trusting. And if you have those reminders, you know, it can just be a subconscious little bell that says, oh no, actually that person betrayed me and actually I'm not friends with whose object that was. So I actually don't need to believe that, you know, I'm someone that is trustworthy and trusting and instead I need to just hang on to this idea that people might not always hang around or I might be abandoned because I have these examples of that around me and maybe it's going to be safer for me if I just don't fully let go of that idea. So I think it's really important for you, especially if you gravitate towards any certain object, and just revisit those items and say, is it really worth it? Because the thing is, I am one of the items that I had was like a neutral army jacket and I really liked it. And it was cute. It fit me really well. Um, but I knew that I really never reached for it. And the reason why was because it, it just didn't give me the best vibes. I didn't feel confident in it. And I just kind of got bad memories every time I pulled it out of my closet. So it just kind of hung there and stayed there. And what you can do instead is get rid of an item like that. And if you want to purchase a new one, get something, even if it's similar, even if it's almost identical, but make that object mean something new. The thing is, it's worth it to get something else and say this jacket for me represents freedom and represents my ideal love and this jap jacket that's almost identical or you know in the same vein it's also a leather jacket but it represents like this whole new side of me like that is such a fun way to get something new and add to your style and change things up a bit but then also like have this really amazing motivating inspirational kind of idea behind it and my final advice for this is if it's like a really big item like a giant piece of furniture that was passed down from your family but you know that has bad memories or bad things associated with it or anything that's like a large object but it's not that easy to swap out like a, like a shirt or something um, and it's going to take a little bit longer to get rid of or it's something that you can't get rid of but you feel like there's still some bad juju associated with it definitely sage the crap out of it grab some sage if you can't have um, fire or smoke wherever you are then just grab some sage oil and then just spray the crap out of it and then set these attentions to cleanse it of its energy to purify it um, and just kind of recalibrate is what I like to call it, the energy um, that is kind of running through your home. And you can even do this through visualization. Um, you can just visualize the item being cleansed in the right light. You can do different tasks that you can so that you kind of neutralize that item and don't let that negative energy just kind of hang out and pollute your home and pollute your own subconscious thoughts. The last tip that I have for you that really helped me, I think the most out of any of these, is to step the hell up. And what I mean by that is to really step into what you want. And I think that, you know, I, I did kind of do that when I was starting on this personal growth journey and I kind of took these steps that were really scary. But after, you know, taking some of those steps, I hadn't really gone further and I hadn't kept I hadn't challenged myself more and I hadn't asked more of myself. There was a certain side of self-sabotage there where I didn't want to set these measurable goals for myself because I didn't want to fail and I didn't want to not achieve those goals. If you haven't set new goals for yourself in a while, definitely revisit those and set those goals. So one micro step that I wanted to mention here is that it only really takes a couple of weeks to start setting in a new habit and to build that in and so instead of waiting until 2019 or instead of saying oh I'm gonna make this my New Year's resolution and then waiting six weeks until that happens to start it you can still just start it now you know make these little micro steps to um, get yourself to that end goal you know if it's being healthy like a lot of people say they want to start take little steps to say okay I'm gonna uh, meal prep and start doing that for the rest of the year we kind of set these little things that are like expectations or um, just little ideas in our head that 
kind of keep us waiting and keep us hanging around for something to, for the ball to drop essentially, for us to get started on what we've been wanting to do. And instead, it's like the time is now, like life is getting shorter by the minute, literally. So just do it, just get started on something. And um, if you need to completely revise your goals or completely set something new or start up a new skill, then, you know, decide to do that. Make that something that you incorporate in your day-to-day -day life, but it gets you kind of, like acclimated to these new changes that you're making in your life so you don't have to do it all at once and then hate everything around you and say oh it's not worth it and blah 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 make it work for you tailor make it so that it's something that you're going to stick to because we kind of spend so long making these decisions and saying oh do i want to quit this or do i want to eat healthier or do i want to do this and it's like Think about it once if you want to and the answer is yes, then just do it. Don't keep waiting and wallowing and saying, you know, what's it going to be and how am I going to do this and freaking out about it. You don't have to worry. You don't have to stress about, you know, the next step. Just start somewhere. Starting somewhere, even if it's a 15 minute a day change, even if it's a five minute a day change, that's more than you were doing before and that's getting you closer to your goal. Look around you and notice what's pissing you off. Is there like one drawer every single day that just makes you angry or daily routine is it the drive home and the traffic that you get every single day that pisses you off find what exactly it is that is really making you angry and decide what you can do about it right now is it taking a different route home from work is it deciding to go to the gym close by to your work and spending an hour there so you don't have to wait in traffic what can you do to make these little pain points in your life and these little annoyances better because it's time for you to stop sitting around and it's time for you to stop waiting for someone else to magically make all these changes happen and it's time for you to look in the mirror and look at yourself and say I'm the one that's going to make this happen. No one else is going to do it for me. I want this so I'm going to go get it. This is why. Because I deserve it. I deserve to have what I want. I deserve to have, you know, these basic things that are not causing me major headaches and not causing me like huge amounts of stress every day. And if there's nothing at all that you can do about the external circumstances, then you're going to have to look at